Hey guys, this is Dan from the Every Dad Workshop. Uh, today we're going to be doing a tire test ramp. Uh, I've got a collection of SCX24s that me and my boys drive, and I found that the tires make a really big difference to how these guys perform. So I want to run a test where we compare totally stock SCX24 uh, with stock tires to stock with weighted trio wheels and Proline high racks versus something like our modified uh, deadbolt that has unweighted wheels with these RC four wheel drive uh, mud slingers. And I've got a couple other tires that I wanna test uh, from a budget friendly Injora wheel and tire combo to some more weighted trio with some slightly different RC four-wheel drive. So in order to compare all these things, we need to have some fair way to quantify their performance. So I want to build a tire test ramp that will allow me to measure the angle of the ramp and then use that to infer or calculate something about the the center of gravity and the location of the center of gravity is what leads to tipping center of gravity relative to where your wheel hits the ground uh, if the center of gravity or effective center of gravity is forward of the wheel you won't tip if it's aft you will tip or slip slip occurs when the tangential force to hold your truck on the ramp is greater than the force of friction which is a function of coefficient of friction mu times the normal force. Now, some of you may not want to get into the trigonometry, but if you do, you can pause it right here, take a look at what I've drawn. All right, let's take a look at the supplies that I've got. So the coefficient of friction between a tire and the surface is actually related to both materials. So you have to get the combination as close, as re close to reality as you can so that's why I went to Lowe's and found these, these kind of simulated stone backsplash tiles. And they come in you know, something like 24 inch sections. You can see they, they separate. And I'm gonna use two sets of those along with some one by twos, some plywood to kind of hold, hold it on the underside. And we're gonna screw it together and use some construction adhesive to hold the, the stone on the wood. And then once that's all assembled, I've got this cool uh, angle protractor that as you raise the angle, you can see the little needle indicates what angle you're at. So hoping we can get some of these trucks up to really high angles. If anything can do a 45 degree, if you look at the math, 45 degrees indicates coefficient of friction of one, which means it provides just as much friction as the normal force relative to the surface. And that would be a big deal. That'd be some sticky tires. Um, apparently, drag race tires can actually do coefficient of friction up to four for short periods of time. And uh, I've seen this with my drag slash. I regularly pull like 1.3 Gs when I'm accelerating off the line. So. Uh, some people have the misconception that that co coefficient of friction mu has to be between zero and one. Uh, it's not true. It can actually be higher than one uh, for some materials. So, all right, guys, uh, let's let's get cracking and make this thing. Okay, so we've got to measure in order to get our structure right. Uh, I want to support the stone with some plywood. Plywood's about an eighth thick. And I'm using these one by twos, which are in fact three quarters by one and a half as the main structure. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut a slot in this beam and then I'm gonna slot the plywood into it. So I've gotta cut, I've gotta rip this plywood wide enough and I've got to cut the slot in this guy at the right spot. So how do I decide where that is? I think 
I want to be able to see the surface of the stone over the side of the beam so I can get a side on shot as the tires are slipping. So if I look at the thickness of this stone, it's between half and three quarters. So I think I want to cut my slot so that the top of the slot is a half inch down from the top of the beam. Uh, then it is, the stone is six inches wide. So if I cut, if I cut like a quarter inch slot into this wood, or maybe, maybe I'll do, yeah, a quarter inch. We'll see how that works at first. Um, and, and then I'm going to rip the plywood six and a half inches wide and we'll see how that goes. All right, let's get to the table saw. Okay, now that we've done our cuts, we've got a little slot in the end of this, in the inside edge of this beam, and we've got our plywood the right length, or width, sorry, and now we can slot them together. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks nice. All right, I'm probably gonna have to tap it in along the length with a mallet, but I think we're ready to get started assembling this guy. Okay, so getting that to fit up was a bit of a trick. I guess it, it fits just fine, but um, it's a little floppy. I cut it, I cut the grooves a little bit large just to account for some bow in the, in the plywood and just to make sure I could get it in there. I'm planning on filling those gaps with the construction adhesive. Um, I think I'm also gonna put some cross pieces on the back side of this thing uh, just to give it a little bit more uh, stiffness uh, so that these beams can't bend side to side. Uh, so I'm gonna measure those right now and cut them. Okay, so these guys came out pretty well. They fit right in, pretty snug. So now I'm gonna use some screws. I really like these screws that have this star-shaped head on them. Uh, they usually come with, uh, with a, a driver bit and they're way easier to drive than Phillips head. Uh, so I'm gonna measure and drill some holes and screw these guys in, hold this assembly together, and then start gluing. All right, now we've got our support structure underneath and the deck seems to be pretty well in place. Uh, it's gonna be time to start uh, gluing this together in a second. Um, however, let's just do a quick fit up with some of our stones to make sure we didn't goof anything up. Yeah, okay, there we go. So that's looking pretty good. So you can see the stones are standing proud, so we'll be able to get a good side-on view. And yeah, this is, this is really nice, strong, rigid structure. Uh, so let's start gluing it together. All right, there it is, all glued together. Uh, now we just gotta wait for it to dry and then we'll stand it up and see if anything falls off. 
Okay, everything's dry. So it seems to be stuck on tight. Let's get testing. Uh, just to reiterate, the things we're gonna be testing are totally stock SCX24 with stock tires and wheels, stock SCX24 Chevy with weighted trio wheels and Proline high racks, and a modified uh, with brass weights, aluminum components, and a 66 turn motor modified deadbolt with non-weighted wheels and uh, RC four wheel drive mudslingers. And we'll run these guys today. And then if, in a later video, I've got some other weighted wheels and, and tires. And then this, this cool like all-in-one Injura set, we'll test those out in another video. So subscribe, stay tuned for that. Um, let's get this set up and start testing. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, we've got our, our angle gauge. We'll attach that on here just so we know how we're performing. Set this up, move the camera in a minute. Okay. Okay. So we're starting off just a little bit below 40 degrees. I'd say it's about 38 degrees. So we'll start with yellow stock. See how it does. Oh yeah. All right, no problem. I don't think that's gonna be a problem for the other guys, so I'm gonna move up on this one. So, that's more like 41 degrees. Let's give that a shot. Starting to slip, oh, there we go. a little tricky and get some traction by going side to side still we're getting pretty close you can see there's a ridge in that tile it's it's got just enough friction to go when it's flat and no no obstacle but just that little ridge in the tile I wonder if I get a little momentum it's a little cheating and go past the ridge and then we find another one Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, so that's about that's about the limit for this guy. All right, let's see what some of the more advanced models can do. All right, so here's the deadbolt. It's nice big mud tires, some weights. Let's see how he does. Still slipping a little, but. Those big knobby tires go right over those, well, go over some of those ridges. See, it's definitely still slipping. So you can see when we're going slow, that's the real test of the coefficient of friction. If you kind of cheat and get some momentum, and sometimes you can well, over this. Let's see if I can do it here. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously not easy with that guy. All right, now, totally stock SCX24 with weighted wheels. You kind of get a feel for the fact that these are really heavy. Um, and Proline Hyrax tires. So that's pretty high end. Um, this is basically super heavy axle that happens to have a body on top. So I'm expecting good things out of this. Right, let's give it a shot. So yeah, no problem. It's pretty impressive. 
Let's see if we can increase the angle. We'll go right to 45. There we go, 45 degrees. Coefficient of friction 1.0, if we can do it. What's the big deal? Check this out. I'm gonna drive. I'm gonna drive right up on my tabletop here. How cool is that? I didn't even plan this. Ha! <laughs> Why bother lifting your SCX24 when you can drive it up with a ramp? <laughs> it doesn't even weigh a pound. <laughs> All right, that is really cool. Um, I'm going to push that a little bit further here. Let's see if we can go to, I don't know, 47 degrees. It's going to get pretty tricky pretty fast. Put this back down so you can see. Sorry. You can see the 45 degrees. Right now you can see 45 degrees. Oh, it's 47 degrees. Yeah, just passed. All right, here we go. Oh, there it goes. Having a tough time with those ridges. <laughs> See that front wheel lifting up? It is really close to the tipping point and the slipping point. Yeah, just give it some gas. Went right up, <laughs> and now it's now it's stuck here. <laughs> Let me see if I can wiggle it off. Nope. Anyway, that is a pretty good test of the coefficient of friction. And we were close to tipping, but I think those, those real heavy trio wheels helped us to keep from tipping. And I think those the combination of wheels and those Proline Hyrax tires gave us some pretty darn good traction. So I'm going to do a much more detailed study of this. I'm going to swap the wheels onto a couple different trucks and I'm going to test a couple different uh, alternate wheels and tire sets that you can get. And uh, stay tuned for that. Like I said, subscribe and hopefully you'll see it pop up once I post that video. Hopefully it's a couple days. All right. Get after it. Have fun.